Greetings friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Today I'd like to talk about Christians and self-defense, and I'm talking about physical matters here. One of the reasons why is a particular prophecy that the Apostle Paul was inspired to write. I'm going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 1, and be reading from the New King James Version. Apostle Paul wrote, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. And sadly, we've been seeing this. Now recently, someone sent me an email, and I'd like to read parts of this. Dear Mr. Teal, we live in pre-tribulation, a non-salubrious time. I find myself reaching out to you with a question. Have you ever created a study presenting a position on God's perspective regarding defending oneself or family, especially in these chaotic times? I respect your opinion on the many subjects you have written. I feel there seems to be as many scriptures that speak of defending oneself as there might be scriptures to the contrary. But alas, there are no sermons. Thank you for your consideration of my, my question. Now this individual contacted other Church of God groups and looks to see what they had to say. So let me go with what I responded to his person with. Sorry I don't have a paper on this. However, this email will give you some general answers. One, Jesus said to pray to be counted worthy to escape what would happen, etc. That's what all Christians should do. And that should be the focus for Christians, not physical theoretical issues. But since most end-time Christians, according to Jesus, will not be Philadelphian, most are not properly focused, and most will not escape. Two, Jesus also said that Christians may have to flee. That's something you may need to do, and sometimes even if one's been assaulted. But that's not your asking, even though number one is probably the best answer here. You, if I understand your intent, seem to want biblical or ministerial justification to harm someone else in an act of defense. On that, I would say, we're to strive to be, quote, Wise as serpents, harmless as doves, but beware of men. So beyond that, what should Christians do when confronted with violence? Well, we would try to stop someone who's trying to harm ourselves or others if we reasonably could. Though that doesn't mean we need to buy guns and try to kill others. We might make noise, call the police, etc. And if something physically seemed absolutely required, we try to inflict the least harm on the perpetrator or perpetrators to stop others from being harmed. Of course, remember, it's always better to avoid a violent fight than to be in one. I hope this helps. And then he emailed me back, and I'll just read what it says. It's pretty brief. Uh, Thank you for your kind response. As I said, I respect your opinions greatly. I gleaned much more from what you wrote, and you're the only minister to respond. Therefore, I also appreciate your courage. That being said, after I got that, I went and I looked at some things that uh, the old Worldwide Church of God taught about this, and I put together a paper. In an article in the old youth magazine, Worldwide Church of God published the following. Do you ever worry about being beat up or robbed or raped or murdered? Many people do. Some are buying handguns or other weapons to protect themselves. Others, especially women, concerned about the possibility of assault or even rape are learning martial arts such as judo, karate, or kung fu. Many others just worry and wait. When you stop and think about it, constant worry about self-defense is rather futile. For example, no matter how strong we get, there's always a possibility someone stronger will come along or will be faced by others who have combined forces to impose their will upon us. That's the idea behind gangs, for instance, strength in numbers. Millions of people today rely on weapons and other forms of self-defense because they feel that's the only source of protection they have confidence in. But did Jesus Christ teach that we should be concerned with retaliation as a form of self-defense? No! He said, in Luke 6, And as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. In other words, put yourself in the other person's shoes and treat them as you want to be treated. Many people think that biblical teaching makes Christians defenseless in a world filled with crime and violence. After all, Jesus taught the concept of turning the other cheek. And Apostle Paul said, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. But God is real, and he has the power to intervene on our behalf on one condition. And whatever we ask, including protection, we receive from him. Why? Because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. Of course, if God says he'll protect us, we shouldn't tempt him by taking unnecessary risk. 
God won't always intervene on our behalf if we're careless and behave foolishly. We should take precautions when we can. As far as relying on weapons, I want to read something from the Bible, the Old Testament. This would be from Psalm 44, verse 6. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. Now, the old worldwide church of God also had something in its flagship publication, The Plain Truth. So let me read about your protection. Most of mankind today live the way they think is right. They make their own laws. Society has all kinds of ideas how people should cope with crime. Millions take up guns and other destructive weapons for self-defense because that's the only source of protection they believe they can have confidence in. What defense against personal attack of crime does the person have who fears and obeys God? Did Christ teach that those who would obey him to take up their own hands to weapons to blow others away in a blaze of gunfire? Christ said, just you want men to do to you, do to them likewise. Many assume Christianity that Christ preached make Christians defenseless in a world of crime and violence. They totally fail to grasp the divine help, blessing, and protection God can heap on those who obey and trust Him in times of trouble. Even those who profess to be Christians often scoff at the idea of divine protection. They practice a religion having a form of godliness, but deny its power. But God is real. His power to intervene on behalf of those who fear and obey Him is real. Christ recognized we lived in a world threatened daily by the possibility of crime and violence. He lived in a world like that. So did the early apostles and Christians whom He commanded, pray daily, deliver us from evil? Can God deliver us from those who ask for His daily care and protection? The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment the day of judgment, answers the apostle in 2 Peter 2. God's power to intervene on our behalf is not limited, except by the quality of one's faith and obedience. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do things which are pleasing His sight. Don't, please don't misunderstand. God expects us to be wise and avoid potential for crime and evil whenever possible. Yet, it's only a matter of using common sense and staying out of, often it's only a matter of using common sense and staying out of trouble areas. Are you doing your part? Do you have God's special help and protection? Are you doing what's pleasing in His sight? Well, you know, God is real. Now, a couple times since I've been in the Church of God, I've faced the real possibility of violence. But in none of those instances did I have to physically harm anyone. Uh, one time I just had to kind of talk my way through it for somebody who was stoned or drunk or whatever, misunderstood something. Now, if you look at the New Testament you, and you look at early church history, you'll find that early Christians did not participate in carnal warfare. They wouldn't even watch violent sports. Now, that being said, I do feel it's appropriate to use loud noise items. For example, if you see some justification that in Deuteronomy 22, 27, or bright lights or something else to stop people from causing you harm. And yes, I don't have any problem with women who carry chemical deterrents. Plus, I advise women who can to carry a working uh, cell phone. Now, these items aren't for revenge, but to give the perpetrator or perpetrators a uh, reason to stop causing physical harm and to stop sinning more. If someone's attacked, and they can't run away or talk somebody out of it, you might have to engage in some type of self-defense, which for a Christian would mean to inflict as least harm as possible, and hopefully none at all. I want to go to Psalm 82, read something that God says, starting verse 3. Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, free them from the hand of the wicked. And this is what I mean about minimal self-defense, uh, free from the hand of the wicked. They say, well, that's got to do with God and not us. Well, let's go to Isaiah 1. I want to read verse 17. This is to regular people, if you will, people who want to follow God. Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. And I think that is... Uh, scriptural backing, if you will, for uh, doing the minimum that you can to stop, minimum harm to somebody, to stop them from dissenting and doing what they shouldn't be doing, to rebuke the oppressor. Now, in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 13, verse 16, it says, Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. As Christians, we're supposed to act with biblical knowledge, which in the case of fighting means to avoid it. Proverbs 22, verse 3 says, A prudent man 
perceives evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Now, not involve, avoiding a fight can get you punished or lead to harm. Now, some have pointed to Luke 22 as a reason why Christians should uh, uh, try to arm themselves uh, for fighting. And so let me read from that, starting in verse 36, talking about Jesus. That then he said to them, but now he who has a money bag, let him take it. Likewise, a knapsack. He who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say to you that this is which is, must be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. So they said, Lord, look, we have two swords. And he said to them, it's enough. Now, why did Jesus want them to have the swords? He said, so prophecy would be fulfilled. Now let's go to Matthew 26. Go a little bit more about swords, starting in verse 50. Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? This is when he's getting betrayed. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly, one of those there with Jesus stretched his hand out and drew his sword, struck the servant, the high priest, cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot pray now to my Father who provide me with more than twelve the legions of angels? How then could the scripture be fulfilled that it must happen thus? So notice it said, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. We're not supposed to put our faith and confidence in this. Yes, we can trust in God. We're not supposed to trust in weapons. That doesn't mean you can't have any. Uh, but Peter had no reason to strike the man with his sword. Now, in my own case, uh, when I'd run in the early in the morning sometimes, heard some dog barking, I'd pick up uh, some small stones in case I needed to dissuade the dog from possibly biting me. Uh, now, in my view, those who carry handguns often think about them and how they might use them, and that's, that's the kind of thing Christians should be thinking about doing. Because weapons aren't supposed to be our focus. What you Christians think about? Philippians 4, starting in verse 8. The Apostle Paul was inspired to write. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, mediate on these things. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Notice we have the God of peace we worship. We don't need to worry like unbelievers do. As Jesus said in Matthew 6, uh, 33 and 34, we're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and we're not supposed to worry about tomorrow. Now, I want to go to Psalm 23, starting in verse 1. The psalmist David wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you'll see that we're not supposed to fear, and God will comfort us, and God can protect us. Of course, that doesn't mean we intentionally go into places that are dangerous uh, when Satan wanted Jesus to do something dangerous. Uh, here, uh, Jesus gave a response, Matthew 4, verse 7, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So when you can, you also should avoid dangerous situations. In Luke 12, 32, Jesus said, Do not fear, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And we aren't supposed to be fearful. We're not supposed to leave live our lives in fear. Now I want to go to the book of Ezra in the Old Testament, Ezra chapter 8. Because to show you what happened when Ezra was worried about a situation he was going to be in. He prayed and he called a fast. Ezra 8, starting verse 22. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road, because we'd spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good and who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. We always need to trust God. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't take appropriate steps. Matthew 10, starting with verse 16, Jesus said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, but beware of men. 
That, by the way, is one of the reasons why most of us have locks. Now in Luke 11, starting in verse 21, Jesus said, When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from all from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides the spoil. We're not supposed to trust in arms, but trust in God. And I read Proverbs 3 a lot, and I want to do that starting verse 5. We are to trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own arms, eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. We need to use wisdom and take note of the world we live in. The Apostle Paul in Galatians 1.4 called this the present evil age. We can also pray. Pray, I'd like to go to Psalm 59, starting in verse 1. Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Defend me from those who rise against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And save me from bloodthirsty men. For God is my defense. Hopefully you've prayed to God and realize that God is your defense. Now Psalm 64, verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. God is our protection, and he's the true source of our defense. We don't need to live in fear like the world does. And as the old youth magazine says, oh, you might have this, but there may be gangs or all kinds of things. We need to have trust and confidence in God and pray to God for protection and look to, look to God as our source of protection. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.